Good afternoon, Your Honor. This is case number IT 95518I, the prosecutor versus Radovan Karavich. Thank you, Madam Registrar. Who appears for the prosecution? Good afternoon, Your Honor. Alan Teeger, Mark Harmon, Carolyn Edgerton for the OTP with case manager Ian Reid. Thank you, Mr. Teeger. Mr. Karadich, I see that you are appearing without counsel, and I'm aware of your request filed on the 5th of August, in which you informed the registry of your intention to represent yourself. Can you just confirm that to me, please? Yes. Could the microphone be switched on, please? Dada. Yes, yes. Thank you. I understand you're well aware of your right to be represented by counsel, is that correct? Da. Yes. Ali Asam say order. But I have waived that right. And we shall proceed on the basis that you represent yourself today. The purpose of today's further appearance is to call upon you to enter a plea to the operative indictment. That indictment was filed on the 18th of May 2000 and confirmed on the 31st of May 2000. Now, I'm aware that at the earlier session of this case, there was some discussion about whether the prosecutor might wish to file an amended indictment, and you indicated that you would prefer to wait to enter a plea until such an amended indictment was presented. Mr. Karadich, to date, there has not been a request to amend the indictment. That's the indictment filed with the pre-trial chamber. Therefore, the only indictment with which we are concerned is the current one of which you are aware. It may never be amended, but if it is, it will be after application by the prosecution and after you have had an opportunity to make submissions on their attempt to have the indictment amended. Amendment can be a very highly complex matter and will ordinarily deal with nuances in the law as well as the facts. This may therefore be one of the areas where you would significantly benefit from having a trained legal representative assisting you in making the arguments, as the indictment is clearly a very important legal document in your case. At the previous appearance, uh, my colleague asked if you wished to have the indictment read and you indicated that you did not wish to have it read aloud to you. I have to ask you again today if you wish to have the indictment read aloud, or do you waive the reading of the indictment? Uh, I waive the reading of the indictment. I have no interest in listening to that indictment, not only because I'm expecting a new one to be filed, but... Also because I have not yet put together my team of associates and helpers, and in relation to what you have said, I believe that by the time the amendment uh, is made, I will have a team of associates who will help me make my submissions. Nevertheless, uh, Mr. Karadich, um, the rules require that we proceed on the basis of the indictment before us and the rules also require that a plea be tendered today. I would therefore ask you how you wish to plead on each count of the indictment and I will go through them one by one. If you choose not to enter a plea for any reason then uh, I am bound by the terms of the rules to enter a plea of not guilty on your behalf. I would rather hear you say that at the end of the trial than at the beginning, but I want to know what 
is happening with my submissions, the ones I filed, and the ones in which I expressed my doubts about the possibility of holding this trial at all because of the many errors made in relation to me and also because I'm deeply convinced that this court is uh, representing itself falsely as a court of the international community, whereas it is in fact a court of NATO whose aim is to liquidate me. It is uh, therefore very hard for me to express my standpoint on anything uh, uh, before this is cleared up. I have stopped uh, using a false name, so I think uh, all parties should do the same. What your plea is in relation to each charge is quite a separate matter from whether there is available to you a ground to challenge the jurisdiction of the court. And indeed, if you have read the rules, as I'm sure you will have read the copy that's been provided to you, you will see that the triggering mechanism for a formal challenge to the jurisdiction of the court is normally having pled guilty to the indictment or not guilty to the indictment and then having proceeded to receive disclosure of the various materials that must be submitted to you in support of the indictment. And you'll well understand the reasoning for that, that a person should have available to him the charges, the position he's taken on the charges, and the supporting material to enable him to challenge the indictment. You've challenged it already. You've made three separate submissions. The prosecution have answered these. The pretrial chamber, comprising myself and two other judges, is seized of your challenge. We will address the challenge, and we will make a determination of that challenge in writing. And later on uh, in this session, I will explain to you the way in which the case will proceed further and how these various matters will be dealt with. At the moment, however, I am solely concerned with the tendering of pleas. And it's a matter for you whether you tender the pleas or I enter them on your behalf. And we will now proceed to deal with that. So would you please stand while we deal with this? Thank you, Mr. Karadich. As to count one of the indictment, you are charged with genocide, punishable under Articles 4.3a, 7.1, and 7.3 of the Statute of the Tribunal. How do you plead, guilty or not guilty? I will not plead in line with my standpoint as regards this court. I shall therefore enter on your behalf a plea of not guilty. Is that the position you're going to take in relation to each of the other ten charges on the indictment? Absolutely. Absolutely, yes. I shall therefore enter pleas of not guilty in respect of each of the other charges on the indictment. In other words, your plea is one of not guilty to the indictment as a whole. The registry will set a date for your trial in due course. Please be seated. May I hold you to your word? Which word? That I'm not guilty. We shall see in due course, Mr. Karadich. Um, that concludes the entry of your pleas, which was the purpose of this further appearance. I am well aware, as you've already indicated in the course of this exchange, that you have a number of other matters which you wish to address. I know that you've made submissions not only on the question of jurisdiction but on other matters, and I think there are a total of ten of these before the, the court on various subjects. Each of the submissions you've made is publicly filed and therefore anyone in the public who wishes to read what you are saying to the tribunal is able to read it. Several of your submissions have already been resolved. For example, on the 22nd of August, the translation unit responded to your submission requesting a correction to the translation of one document of the 5th of August, 
And this morning, decisions were filed on your submissions relating to search warrants and documents relating to the freezing of your assets. All your other submissions are currently under active consideration by the pre-trial chamber. In order to ensure that all necessary steps are being taken to prepare for trial and to deal with matters raised by you and the prosecution, I have arranged a status conference to be held at which all of these issues may be addressed. That will be a far lengthier hearing, I suspect, than today. A status conference is held in accordance with Rule 65 bis of the Tribunal Rules. In part, that rule states what the purpose of such a proceeding is and includes reviewing the status of an accused's case and, most importantly, I think, from your point of view, to allow the accused the opportunity to raise issues in relation thereto. So I've set a status conference for Wednesday, the 17th of September, at 2.15 p.m. At that, at that hearing, you will be given an opportunity to address any issues which have not been answered by written cha a decision of the Chamber by that time. Apart from the plea today, the other really important matter that... Uh, has to be uh, addressed to some extent is the issue of the disclosure of materials to you. That's material supporting the prosecution indictment. Mr. Tiger, can you assist me by indicating the stage you've reached in making disclosure to the accused? Certainly, Your Honor. <clears throat> uh, first, as the court is aware, <coughs> the prosecution filed a motion seeking protection for confidential and non public materials. Um, although uh, we are awaiting a decision on that motion, meanwhile, we have made available to the accused um, the public materials uh, in these supporting materials, as well as other documents uh, not public that we considered could be disclosed, um, notwithstanding the fact that the order had not issued. Uh, that fundamentally reflects... Um, or encompasses virtually all of the documents, but not witness statements in the supporting materials. Uh, what remains, therefore, are the witness statements, which we intend to disclose, barring further direction from the court, as soon as the order issues. The one small exception may be uh, if any of the statements are properly subject to protective measures. We don't anticipate that to be the case at this time, but should it be the case, of course, we would file appropriate motions uh, accordingly. So that is the status, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Tiger. Uh, I, I can tell both parties that um, the trial chamber, pre-trial chamber rather, has already given active consideration to the question of what, if any, order ought to be made in relation to the protection of materials disclosed in support of the indictment, I envisage a decision being made on that early next week. And when that decision is made, it should enable completion of disclosure. Um, the question of uh, protective measures will be referred to to some extent and you will then need to decide what action is appropriate in light of what the decision says. But that decision will be issued uh, fairly soon. Thanks, John. It, it follows, Mr. Karadich, that disclosure of the supporting material uh, which has to be made uh, in your own language will be completed, I hope, in the course of next week. But we shall have to see uh, exactly when that is. Uh, the date on which that disclosure is completed is an extremely important date for you 
because it establishes the deadline from which the time for preliminary motions runs. Now, that includes the motion you've already referred to challenging the jurisdiction of the tribunal. Rule 72 of the rules requires that you file your preliminary motions challenging jurisdiction, alleging defects in the form of the indictment and any other preliminary motion within 30 days after completion of that disclosure. Now, Mr. Karadich, you've, you've made a number of written submissions, as I've already said, and these have all been perfectly comprehensible, and the Chamber is able to deal with them. But there may come a time when it's not quite so simple as that, and it does help everyone, including you, to follow the normal practices of the tribunal. Everything is clearer when that is done. While you're representing yourself, um, it can be difficult, I think, to quickly come to terms with the uh, details and technicalities associated with all the rules. So I've asked the registry to make a member of staff available as a liaison between you uh, and them with a view to assisting in the preparation of documents in a form that is the, the norm in the tribunal, without in any way trying to inhibit the way in which you express yourself, which is perfectly um, uh, normal, that you would express yourself in the language with which uh, you would normally address issues of this nature. Now, I hope you will accept that assistance. It's not legal advice. It's not meant to be. It's purely administrative assistance. It is, of course, at the end of the day for you to decide what to do. But uh, that's aimed at uh, ensuring that uh, all the requirements of these rules are met. Now, Mr. Teeger, um, I mentioned earlier, uh, as did Mr. Karadich, the question of uh, the possibility of amending or applying to amend the indictment. Is that something you still have in mind? Yes, Your Honor, it is. Well, if that's the case, when do you expect to deal with it? Uh, we are dealing with it currently, and our projected uh, submission date would be uh, by the uh, end of this next month. Um, that is the last week of September. C can you explain to me what the difficulty is that you're having in dealing with the issues in such a prominent case in which the indictment was first filed over eight years ago? Well, indeed, Your Honor, part of the issue is the mm -hmm. length of time that's transpired mm -hmm. since the filing of the current indictment. The number of relevant cases that uh, have litigated issues um, come to adjudicated facts uh, on issues and crimes relevant to this case. Um, the need to address those uh, issues in formulating an indictment that is as uh, that lends itself to the most efficient um, presentation possible. The um, evidence that has been gathered uh, since that time, including large collections of documents, um, the evolving jurisprudence. It's not, it, it is our intention and our ongoing effort to ensure the best possible pleading instrument, one that offers the most uh, heightened specificity, one that um, addresses itself to those aspects of the indictment that may, may be most efficiently presented in light of both the evolving jurisprudence, evolving procedures, and the adjudicated facts. And that entails uh, a review of a vast volume of material. We could certainly have proceeded to simply uh, address any glaring or obvious issue related to the indictment 
but it seemed far more prudent, particularly at this time, the early stage of the proceedings, to undertake the most comprehensive uh, possible review to avert the need for any further issues later down the road. As the Court is aware, amended indictments are fairly common in this institution, and those occur at, generally as trial teams go through the materials uh, and through the evolving jurisprudence uh, during the course of pretrial preparation. And that has resulted, I might add, in jurisprudence in this institution uh, about when an indictment is appropriate. Some of those amended indictments have taken place uh, deep into the pretrial process. So for that reason, the prosecution uh, did not want to take a passive approach and wait until its pretrial preparations identified such issues, but to take a very active approach and tackle the issue immediately at the earliest stage of the proceeding. And, and that, Your Honor, is a significant review, and that's the nature of the issue. Under these circumstances, and particularly at this phase of the case, um, I think our projected date is a very reasonable one, and I would hasten to add that it's not our ideal or perfect world date. It is one that indeed attempted to balance uh, the interest in the best possible charging instrument uh, against the interest in moving forward as expeditiously as, as possible, and we really have done our best and are doing our best to identify um, the minimum period possible to do that. Well, Mr. Tiga, speaking for myself, I find it surprising that bearing in mind the period since the original indictment, the aim that everyone was aware of, of concluding the business of this tribunal fairly expeditiously, and the significance in the life and to the life of this tribunal of this particular case, that you tell me now that it's only once the accused is in custody that this exercise is being undertaken. I am surprised. I say no more than that at this stage, and I sincerely hope that you're not serious about that date. That concludes today's proceedings. We will next meet at the status conference on the 17th of September at 2.15. Dali, May I be allowed to? You wish to say something, Mr. Karadzic? Well, what I wanted to say was this. I can say in advance that I won't uh, agree to adjudicated facts if they have not been proved in these proceedings. And will the trial chamber allow more resources to me, as it has done to the opposite side, because all this uh, wasting of time and the resources that the prosecution is asking for itself, I would like to ask to have two to be given in equal measure. Mr. Karadzic, it's one of the fundamental tenets of the law of international criminal procedure that there must be equality of arms, and that tenet will be recognized in all that this trial chamber in due course does. Um, the very points you've just made are points that will be appropriate for you to make in the context of the amendment process that Mr. Tiger has referred to. So you will have your opportunity, rest assured, as I've already indicated to you. This hearing is now adjourned. All rise. We're full of it.